The following review is intended for entertainment purposes and targeted for adult fans of the series. There's not much intrigue to Imperial right now, at least not at this point, which means the same thing. Hello there, heroes. I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to another comically long review. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic mainline series right now has been bouncing back and forth a lot between, and I hope you will forgive this terrible pun, Alpha and Omega lately, going back and forth between the stories of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Omega Rangers. Fair warning, this is an Omega Rangers issue. Yes, you can basically think of this as Power Rangers issue number zero, as we spend the entire time with the original Ranger trio, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus the Dark Rangers and the Terror Zords. That gets to wait until the end of October. Although with the Terror Zords, if you think about it, that issue coming out just a few days before Halloween is appropriate. Anyway, let's take a look at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 54, and I'll tell you just how I got my hands on this pretty shiny cover. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to see all of my videos, ring the bell, get your notifications set up so you get notified of whenever I post brand new videos, and if you'd like to lend any financial support to my channel, please consider checking me out on Patreon or Coffee at Orange Ranger Videos. The main cover strikes me as slightly cartoonish, if I'm being honest, but it's a good image. The Omega Rangers are fighting a brand new enemy, green swirling energy seeming to electrocute them. This month, I have the foil cover, Lord Draken holding the green chaos crystal. I don't normally go in for variants, so why do I have this one? My local comic book shop guy forgot to order my copy this month. It happens but he did have this version that was sent to his shop, so he gave it to me so I wouldn't have to wait for the standard order to come in. Hey, a reminder that if you happen to live in or near the South Georgia area, Cool Comics in Valdosta, Georgia is a fantastic shop. The trading card cover is Goldar, and I love both the action pose and this interesting logo for him where the coins have been. I'd love to see this on a coin that fits in a power morpher. Morph into Goldar! The issue begins ominously as G records a message for an emergency beacon, one that will be launched if the ship is destroyed and the Omega Rangers killed. Those very Rangers face down their new four-armed foe. No, this is the Imperial. It might be the Imperial, but I believe it's the Imperial. A creature that refers to itself in the plural. They say they are a servant of creation that turns the cycles of existence and whose decisions fuel the tides of death and rebirth. What are you talking about? <laughs> Imperial called this a new beginning, but Trini points out that every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Imperial basically admits that they cleansed the planet with fire, stripping away the old life, and now new life will be able to grow in just a few centuries. Kind of like a chia plant, if you think about it. They've done this countless times before, holding up a skull and saying it's always so beautiful. Hey, if they lick that skull, it might just taste like grape jelly and mustard. Okay, I only brought up that kind of forced Linkara reference because of something I have really wanted to say every single time he refers to grape jelly and mustard tasting bad together. They don't. I'm serious. My stepdad taught me a recipe for a sauce that goes on cocktail weenies that is really just grape jelly and mustard heated up and mixed together, and it's fantastic. Seriously, try it! They say the Gorvinians, the people who were on the planet that they're currently on now, had their era and chose to squander it. Righteous races, according to Imperial, do what the former residents of Safe Haven did, ascend to the stars. Zack is pissed that this creature has appointed themselves judge, jury, and executioner, but Imperial says they have a master, everyone does, and they are only an instrument of change crushing the skull and making a flower emerge from it. 
This issue never touches on it directly, but this focus on the life force of a planet kept drawing my mind back to the 2017 Power Rangers movie, how it said that the Zeo crystal was the source of all life in the universe, and every planet that had life on it had a piece of the Zeo crystal embedded within it. This greater storyline has addressed the very source of the Zeo crystals, so I'm just wondering if this is going to be an... The Rangers summon their weapons and basically tell Imperial that they really aren't down with its plan to wipe out all life so newer life can take its place. Trini tries to call Xi to have an exit plan ready, but it doesn't respond. Imperial isn't convinced, saying the Rangers' view is too narrow, and then drops an interesting prophecy that one day they will fight at their side. The rangers attack, Zack apparently able to make those bladed staffs spin just outside of his hands, though you'd have to imagine that that would tangle up the attached chains. They leap on floating rocks around them, but Imperial can turn into rocks and change locations quickly. Jason tries an attack, but gets flung way back into another rock. That rock then comes to life, sprouting arms and grabbing him. Hmm. That's nasty. Zack lands the first blow, catching Imperial on the face with his blade staff, but they then just knock him back. Imperial says they are outmatched. They've wiped out entire civilizations, destroyed gods. Heck, they even admit to killing the Red Emissary. It's really interesting to me that those story covers from a while back are actually canon parts of the story. I think this dialogue balloon is wrongly assigned, as Zack says, easy now, that was a lot of sharp rocks, with Trini standing over him. Seems like she should be the one saying that. Trini does say that Jason is in trouble, but it's she to the rescue, firing... laser torpedoes? Rockets fire down from the ship, but then Imperial is surrounded in laser beams. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Another bit of confusing dialogue here. Xi tells the rangers to hurry as they're firing everything the Spectrum has, and it's probably not going to matter. Nobody responds, and then Xi just keeps talking, telling them that it's time to remember the adage of Captain Jack. We must fight to run away. Imperial summons a giant monster from the lava to attack the Spectrum and breathe fire at it, seemingly destroying it to the Omega Ranger's shock. Jason tells them to focus, or they will be next. They summon the Omega Zords, which are still ugly as original sin. Zack makes a suggestion we have yet to see, confirming something that I don't think we were ever sure of. Yes, the Omega Zords can form a Megazord. However, Jason says it's not time yet, since apart, they're faster. However, the Lava Monster, which weirdly looks like a giant Xenomorph here, is quicker than it seems. Showing that perhaps Imperial was bluffing and isn't prophetic, they say that perhaps they were wrong, and the Omega Rangers die here. Zack fires an Omega Sonic Strike from his Zord that knocks the monster back, but just pisses it off. Look what you did. Jason gets his Zord over just in time to pull Zack's down under a fire attack. Trini tells them to get clear, but then G calls in. Yes, the Spectrum survived the fire attack. I love this exchange. G, you're alive? Technically, no, but that's important. Xi also then refers to itself with a gender-neutral pronoun, weave, in saying it has an idea. I have an idea. Really? What is it? Let's leave! Imperial is getting bored. Where's the Arbiter to yell, silence, when you need him? Even saying they remember the original Omegas, and these are mere shadows. Jason Zord fires a Hadouken, uh, I mean Omega Fire Fury, which Imperial just blocks with a weary sigh. Jason loads up another, but the monster knocks his Zord down first, grabbing its head and saying, Die! Pants to be darkened. But then... Trainee Zord hops back in, combined with the Spectrum. 
Remember back when the comic revealed the Spectrum 2 and G said the ship had a lot of nifty secrets and I predicted that it could become a Zord? Well, it just combined with a Zord, so I'm counting it. <laughs> I was right! The monster attacks them, but the combined Zords charge up a big energy ball the Omega Spectrum attack and fire a beam that destroys the monster and is visible from space. That's a spicy meatball! Jason asks what else Imperial has to throw at them, but again, he who fights and runs away lives to run away again, so they are gone. The Rangers realize that the planet is collapsing and they need to leave. On the Spectrum, Trini talks to the couple we've been seeing that have been sort of representing the people of this planet. They want to know why someone would do this, and Trini says they're going to find out, taking them back to Safe Haven in the meantime. Zack finds the little girl, whose name is Rishka, and offers to play a round of Torino Ball, but in a really touching moment, she just hugs him. Jason and Xi talk about Imperial, Xi noting that there are no references to this creature in any database. If this thing is this powerful and has been wiping out gods and planets, how has nobody ever talked about that? Jason thinks that maybe it was sleeping until something woke it up. Xi speculates that if, as Imperial said, they do have a master, there's likely a plan in place with other planets. Jason says the Rangers' retirement has been postponed, telling Xi to set a course for Earth so they can confer with Zordon. This is a weird issue to me. It just feels a little bit different, probably owing to the complete solo focus on the Omega Rangers that portends the separation of these two stories that we're getting soon. I was tempted to call this another one of those Boom Studios setup exposition issues, but it's really not. There's a lot of action in this issue, primarily one ongoing fight scene that lasts so long that even the villain gets bored. There's not a lot of intrigue to Imperial, at least not at this point. It's a powerful creature that speaks in plural pronouns and destroys stuff. The Rangers just barely beat it this time, and there's more work to be done. It just feels a little story light, and I don't mean that there's more details coming in future issues. I'm just saying it doesn't feel like there's a lot of story in this particular issue. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 54 gets a 3.5 out of 5. Next time, it's back over to Marvel and the giant kaiju fighter himself as I take a look at The Rise of Ultraman issue number 2. That's going to do it for another comically long review. Heroes, thank you so much as always for watching. Now that the video's done, you can let me know what you thought of this issue as well as my review of it down in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you smack that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed this video. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you. Hey, if they... If they, if they, if they, if they split. G also then refers to itself with a gender-neutral pro-town... Pro... Wow. I'm doing that entire take again. Jason loads up another... Without any touching on the MMPR... There's not a lot of intrigue to Imperial down in the...